about to go live yeah good evening everyone so this is the 70th uh, fertility master class uh, that we are doing and this is uh, in continuation with our reproductive immunology series that we have started uh, in the last uh, month and uh, all these sessions have been uh, very very uh, informative and I request everyone to watch the previous uh, few sessions. So at this outset, this is the first uh, session in March. And I would like to congratulate Dr. J on uh, the Mullerian anomalies, which he has done the huge number of 31 cases uh, in February in his charitable uh, 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 charitable surgery uh, surgeries. So I think that is quite a humongous feat that he has achieved uh, where patients have come all across uh, India and taken benefit of his expertise uh, in Mullerian anomalies which is uh, uh, extremely, extremely commendable and it is one of a kind. And if anybody has any cases uh, to uh, be referred uh, in his charitable OPD for uh, Mullerian anomalies, I think uh, he is the right person to operate on all Mullerian anomalies. So uh, coming back to today's topic, uh, today's uh, topic is lymphocyte uh, immune therapy. And uh, as we all know that... Uh, the immunological aspects of uh, pregnancy and uh, implantation is still unknown and fetus being an allograft uh, has to be accepted by the mother and as all mothers who are all tolerant to their kids uh, I think the embryo also has to be tolerated by the maternal immune system which uh, kind of like you know doesn't happen uh, in some cases and I think immunology plays uh, a very important role in modulating uh, the acceptance of this uh, fetus. So we have spoken about thymosin, we have spoken about I IVIG, we have spoken about intralipid and one such experimental uh, procedure is uh, lymphocyte immune therapy which we will discuss uh, today and uh, yeah over to you sir. So, hi everyone. See, one good thing about paternal lymphocyte immunization therapy is that one, it is not a new therapy. No, it has been going on. It has been practiced in, in even in India since the last 25, 30 years. There is nothing unique about it. It is one of the most basic experimental therapies as far as recurrent pregnancy loss is concerned. Right? So if anybody can go through any of our master classes, so if you go through the last 10 master classes on immunological factors for pregnancy loss or implantation failures, you will realize that paternal lymphocyte immunization therapy is only indicated in cases of idiopathic recurrent pregnancy loss or in cases of recurrent implantation failures where it is idiopathic, provided the blocking antibody is absent in the mother. Okay, that is the most important thing. Okay, this blocking antibody usually is actually produced by a lot of unknown factors, but it is believed that it is produced predominantly. Uh, okay, either through the sperm antibodies, it is produced either through the uh, you know um, um, previous implantations of that embryo which would have occurred and which would have failed and caused the biochemical pregnancy and all these types of things. So we don't exactly know who will produce a blocking antibody and who will not. But it is very, very easy to test it. You need to test the couple. You need to test the husband and you need to test the wife. It is something which is commonly available called as CDC cross-matching. It is available as a routine blood test. It will cost you somewhere between 2,800 to 4,000 rupees depending on which laboratory you are sending it to and you just need to send a blood sample. Okay. You can also go one step further into this and you can do something called as HLA typing. Okay. And the difference between the HLA types of the couple should be more than six for you to go and attempt any form of lymphocyte immunization therapy. If there is no major difference beyond that, then there is no point in attempting that at all because it already talks about the fact that there is an established immunity. Okay. Now, let's assume the mother is negative for blocking antibody. That is CDC cross match is negative. Okay. That means the mother does not have any presence of blocking antibody. Then how do you do paternal lymphocyte immunization therapy? Okay. It is one of the simplest procedures. Okay, I know of people uh, who are very good friends with me and I love them a lot actually. 
and they give bowel preparation to patients who require lymphocyte immunization therapy okay so remember it is just a blood test okay you just need to take out blood of the male partner male partner's blood he has to be fasting only for 6 hours okay the reason why the male partner should be fasting is because of fasting blood no it loses out a lot of cholesterol and when it loses out on a lot of cholesterol in that situation what happens is the turbidity of the blood goes down that is important for you to understand as a take home point to do it okay now how do you do plit after you remove the blood so all the standard protocols the husband and wife would undergo infectious disease testing and all these types of things you need to draw approximately 70 to 90 cc of the blood from the male partner okay and it needs to be put inside this tube can you see the name of this tube i think everyone can see the name of this tube it is something called as septmate can you see that okay even if you can't it is something called as septmate tubes okay it is something which is which is a specialized tube which is available uh, in order to separate can you see this uh, it has it has two concentration gradients here it has one concentration gradient here and underneath that there is another separate concentration gradient with micro calipers inside the tube can you see this tube it has micro calipers inside the tube these tubes we have made available at our units in uh, definitely we have it in bombay because we've been doing lit since the last four years we have it with dr shilpa in bangalore and we also have it in hyderabad and hopefully very soon in chennai and agra as well so what what typically happens is you need to put blood inside this okay the collected blood of the male partner this collected blood of the male partner don't just put the blood and forget about it there is a solution which comes with this which is called as fecal solution i have actually asked one of my girls to go down inside the stock room and get the fecal solution up again this fecal solution is a commonly commercially available solution in order to separate the lymphocytes so it is not a solution which i have designed or shilpa madam has designed there is nothing like that it is a commercially available solution it is a little expensive okay which is why people don't like to invest in it unless they have a lot of cases but otherwise uh, it's a very straight forward solution so there is a ratio of the amount of patient's blood and the amount of uh, fecal solution which you need to put inside this tube okay once you put it inside the tube you need to undergo the process of filtration which is centrifugation after the centrifugation is done for that then there is a separation technique it's a very standard separation technique trust me and normally from approximately 60 to 80 ml of the blood which is uh drawn from the male partner approximately less than 1 ml okay of lymphocytes you will be able to collect now these lymphocytes which you collect from that are injected subdermally okay in the forearm of the female partner huh? remember males lymphocyte to be put in the female partner okay if you put the male's lympho lymphocyte in his forearm then no effect okay so you have to put it in the female partner's forearm that is very important for you to understand because you need blocking antibody to develop in the female because she has the uterus correct so those blocking antibodies when you put you will try to put it in the forearm approximately 0.1 ml through the small tubercule in syringe uh, i think you can also use smaller needles like those black needles no 27 gauge 24 gauge 25 gauge those smaller needles can also be used there is no need to give any anesthesia to the female partner you can try and do it as an outpatient based procedure or you can there is no special positioning which is required on that you can just clean the arm with a spirit swab or a sterilium swab or something and just go and inject after we inject we usually ask the partners to be in the hospital for the next 20 or 30 minutes just to look out for any reactions we don't give pre dosages of steroids we don't give pre dos pre dosages of avil finargan nothing is given to the patient okay it is a very standard procedure for preparing and putting it inside it is very easily replicable it is very easily copyable okay it is very easily replicable and very easily copyable okay the only thing which you should keep in mind in this is when you put lymphocytes basically it is going to take some time for the blocking antibody to develop it is not that today you put tomorrow morning there will be blocking antibodies it can take approximately 3 to 6 weeks for the blocking antibodies to develop there could be certain situations where cdc cross match which was initially negative will still say stay negative after 6 to 8 weeks of plit in that situation you might have to repeat a dose 
of the lymphocyte immunization therapy but otherwise a single dose is sufficient for more than 60 to 80 percent of the cases okay now let's assume the blocking antibody has developed cdc matching has been done and everything is good so does it mean that when you do a lymphocyte immunization therapy the patient will not have an abortion okay that is wrong okay this therapy is only going to work in around 10 to 12 to 15 percent of the people maximum okay if in case one is so confident about lymphocyte immunization therapy then they should not give steroids they should not give heparin ecosprin nothing to the patient they should tell the patient i have done lymphocyte immunization therapy go become pregnant nothing will happen okay it doesn't really work that way okay if you were to try it isolatedly it will work in only 10 percent of the patients okay so i think commercialization of lymphocyte immunization therapy is an absolute joke okay if you try to commercialize lymphocyte immunization therapy and try to make an indication oh you have one abortion come let's do lit oh you have one you don't even have an abortion no problem let's do lit it will prevent an abortion okay all such types of things are not going to help anyone all such types of things have no role frankly speaking because remember one thing if the therapy was really so good okay it has got no brain intervention required you need a centrifuge machine you need a tube you need separation medium okay if it was really so good each and every fertility unit in the world would be doing it on their own understanding the only problem is on an average we will get around 150 to 170 patients a year who have come to us for doing paternal lymphocyte immunization therapy out of that we will do the therapy only in maybe 30 patients or maybe 35 patients because rest of the patients don't fall in that category okay and even out of these 35 to 40 patients in whom we do okay the number of people who will become pregnant out of that and not have an abortion on any other thing is maybe four to five so you will understand if you do it very routinely that this is not something which is a game changer okay this is not something which is a game changer as far as immunization or reproductive immunology is concerned it sounds very cute you know oh i am doing lit it sounds so sweet you know so that is why people think that oh it must be something great but once i show you these tubes and once you see the centrifugation medium in my hospital most of the times the centrifugation and separation is done by the nurses and technicians then the hematologist will come see the lymphocytes he will prepare a slide to see if it is actually lymphocytes okay they will always do this if you ask this to be done by a hematologist they will not believe anybody they will do the lymphocyte put it on a slide they will prepare the slide they will check that if it is lymphocyte it's take around 15 minutes for them to stain it and then they will go ahead and inject okay because that is how they are trained to do everything which is why which is how we do it at our place there are so many people who are doing it as gynax so they don't even employ a hematologist to do it they definitely don't even know how to prepare the slide so they must be putting something which is looking white thinking it is lymphocytes inside okay probably even that must be working okay but if a hematologist is doing it at your setup he or she will prepare a slide to identify lymphocytes okay many a times there could be mixture see the one thing the hematologist doesn't really want is a mixture of platelets and lymphocytes to occur together they don't want that this is what my hematologist has taught me that we don't really want when we do an lit we don't want lymphocytes and platelets to go and mix with each other they want isolated lymphocytes and as i said they will prepare it on a slide they will calculate a gradient and then they will put it inside okay so we do that at our place and i think it is it is decent it is not something with which I get carried away at all because I think it is a very, very specific therapy which has very limited indications. It does not really have major indications. One should not really think that if your IVF patient has failed two embryo transfers with excellent embryos, they should do LIT. That should not be the take-home point. The take-home point is if two IVF cycles have failed and if you suspect implantation failure, then before you do all these things, do a good hysteroscopy, rule out chronic endometritis, rule out the other factors, which probably must be playing a role because this is one of the last factors which will play a role in doing anything to, to the uh, you know reproductive immunology. So with that, I conclude and I can take maybe two or three questions from Shilpa, madam. Yeah. Uh, what about the consent for LIT? How do you take that? It's an experimental procedure consent. We have the consent. I think we have shared it with you. We'll yeah. share it on the groups with others if people are interested. 
Okay. And what is your role uh, for LIT in recurrent implantation failure? As you told that it has to be kept in the last compared to like, you know, the others like chronic endometritis, hysteroscopy, and uh, even PGTA, you think uh, should come before uh, LIT? Of course. Yeah. Of course. I mean, there is, it's a no-brainer. If you go through our last 10 classes, we have really mentioned that PGTA with an euploid embryo is a huge difference. A euploid embryo goes inside and it will stimulate that endometrium to implant itself. Yes. That's the beauty of a euploid embryo. Yeah. Okay. So one has to keep that in mind. Okay. So what is the cost of this HLA typing, if at all, if you're doing? Around 7,000 rupees, madam. Okay. And you have to do it for both couples. So it will come up to around yeah. 14,000. 14, no, no, no. Couple, couples, couples, it comes to 7,500. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, coming to like, you know, I mean, licensing or does it require like the solution has to be stored in a cold room in a certain temperature? Uh, how does it work? Two to eight degrees. Mm -hmm. If we call solution, we store it in the cold room. Mm -hmm. It is in two to eight degrees. Mm -hmm. No other licensing is required because as I said, at our place, the hematologist is signing on it. So he gives the slide. You should see what he does. It's so beautiful. He gives the slide which is full of lymphocytes mm -hmm. to the patient. Understanding. And uh, you know, when a technically gifted guy does it, yeah, their slide preparation is superb, madam. Okay. I, I mean, so, I'm a gynec, but I love the slides, they, the way in the, which they make it. Okay. So the commonest uh, question that a couple will ask is like whether uh, same bl blood group in uh, the husband and wife, is it going to cause any? Abortion? No correlation. No correlation, right? And uh, uh, with regard to uh, LIT, I mean, do you repeat it uh, uh, every time, even after she gets pregnant, if it is for recurrent miscarriages? There are some papers which state that you must repeat or you can repeat, but I think it has got no role. Trust me. Okay. So it is a single sitting according to you and the one that you had done. If the blocking the antibody is formed, then yes, it is a single sitting. Single sitting. Yeah. So, uh, we are talking about paternal leukocyte immune therapy. So, is there any role of like, you know, uh, just injecting random leukocyte and not paternal? I mean, all that we need is just a blocking antibody, right? I mean, how do we correlate or uh, that like only the husband's uh, thing has to so, be there? So, this is a very important question because remember one thing, you don't really need this therapy at all, at all, if you are doing IVF with donor sperms. Yeah. You don't really need this therapy at all if you are doing it with donor eggs. Mm. You don't require this therapy at all if you are doing embryo, uh, the donation embryo means uh, sperm is also different and egg is also different. You don't require that. This therapy is only for self cycle, husband and wife. Okay. The reason being the embryo which is formed, it is believed that once the implantation has occurred, Okay, the way in which the immunology would probably function is because some of the genes which the paternal part of the embryo, the syncytiotrophoblast blast would express, okay, it is that which gets rejected for that particular partner. Okay, it is. it does not really mean that it will happen to all the partners, which is why I am saying that it is an experimental therapy because there are so many people who, have, who would have become pregnant with blocking antibody negative, right? So many people on earth. So I really think that's why I said it's a very, very last stage experimental therapy not to be done randomly on people. So in a month, uh, in a year, how many cases you do? Around 30, 35, not more than that. Okay. And how much is the cost of that reagent? You said it is expensive. Uh, Around a lakh. And how many I, cases? I think one lakh. For? Yeah, I know it. Yeah. Uh, and for how many cases it comes? I don't know. Maybe 30, 35 cases. Yeah, I don't 30, know. 30 cases. 30, uh, 35 cases, I think. Yes, yes. Uh, so, I think uh, your charges uh, uh, are quite uh, steep in when it comes to LIT. It would be around a lakh. Uh, yeah, 1.25. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Thank you. I think uh, we'll take the rest of the questions in the group. Thanks. It was good. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.